How many times have you quit comedy? Oh, it used to be an ongoing joke. I would promote my shows when I was like when I was doing well hmm. and touring a lot. I would promote my shows as like this is the last show I'll ever do. Oh yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a show. I had a tour one year that was just called Jamie Kilstein Hates Comedy. <laughs> I'm quitting comedy now to yeah. go just focus on the podcast and writing. Cool. And go to the desert. But like at least twenty. At least 20 times. Did you make a scene? Like, at a Every club, time. Like, I quit. Oh, I wish I did. They'd be, <laughs> they'd be like, who are you? You're not even past here. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think I was famous enough to make a scene. I, I, I would announce it on Twitter. I would talk about it on my podcast. Uh, one time, Robin Williams talked me out of quitting. Really? Yeah. Did wow. I tell you that story? No. It's a no. fucking... It's a wild story. That's uh, cool. I don't think I've told it on any podcast. So... Uh, so this was after, so uh, Joe Rogan and I are friends, um, but we had this big like political fight years right. ago. I saw it, and then it was ridiculous uh, on my part. Um, and yeah, jo- Joe was being a bully. Too. We were both not our best selves, yeah, uh, yeah. and like he's like evolved so much on like those issues, and I think I have too. And but essentially, what it was was like I was. Again, I felt like I was failing in comedy, so I'm like, I had to double down as like, I'm now the super liberal political guy uh-huh. and fuck comics, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And and then, so that's when like all of my comedy friends started like hating me, and it was just I was depressed doing comedy when I was successful, and now I'm like, everyone hates me, F- fucking I'm right. done. And me and my ex were going to see Book of Mormon that week in New York, and um. And I told her, I was like, hey, I know I've jokingly quit, like, a lot, but, like, the podcast is doing well enough, like, I'm out. I can't anymore. Like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Like, I was suicidal, and I was like, I'm done. And, uh, and she said, okay. She was like, no question. She just knew it was serious, and she was like, cool. We're mm-hmm. fine. So we're, we, we go to see the play, and then uh, intermission happens, and I'm waiting in line uh, I'm waiting in line to use the bathroom. And I see the guy who plays Cam from Modern Family, Eric Stone Street. Is that uh, the redhead guy? No, the big guy, his partner. Oh, okay. And, yeah. uh, and at the time, because I've always been like a dad, I'm like, Modern Family is a quaint, lovely show. And I loved it. Mm. And I was like, I want to say something to him. But I was like, I don't want to be the fucking... Uh, the guy bothering like a celebrity on his way to right. the bathroom. Mm-hmm. But then I do the douchebag thing where I'm like, I'll be a cool artist and I'll say, I enjoy your work. And then I'll just turn back around and then he'll probably think I'm an artist and then we'll be friends. And he'll be like, wait, <laughs> come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come be in my show, Modern Family. <laughs> yeah. uh, I did that. I sat next to Samuel L. Jackson on a plane once. That's not true. I sat one seat away because I'm pretty sure he bought the seat next to him for his because snakes. it was in first class and M. Yeah, nice. first, he bought the God snakes. damn, man. Every time Fuck. he gets on a plane, <laughs> He must be just like, fuck, here it, fuck, here here it go. fucking comes. Uh, Real quick, my favorite joke of uh, the movie Long Shot oh, yeah. was about Samuel L. They were talking about Which like, was it? they were just describing like, they look perfect like this, like that. And someone mm. said, perfect, like a Kangol hat on Samuel L. Jackson. So good. <laughs> I so butchered good. it, but I laughed mm. hard. Most of the people in the theater mm. didn't laugh. Mm. I assume I just have a higher... IQ. IQ yeah. Oh, I laugh yeah, harder at those lines just to be like, you're all wrong. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyways. Uh, oh, so, oh yeah. Back to my dead friend. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> so I see. Uh, name so he, drop. Name drop. He's dead. <laughs> um, so I see. So I go to do it. I'm like, I'm going to go say I enjoy your work. So I turn around to Cam and I go, I enjoy your work. And literally, I don't even get the sentence out. He is turning around. I assume, like, because I've creeped him out. He turns around to the guy behind him and goes, I just want you to know I really enjoy your work. And he <laughs> pulled my fucking move, and the guy behind him it was Robin. And Robin sees me, and Robin and I were friends for a while. He saw me in San Francisco and nice. just, like, made my career. He was, like, the only reason I didn't quit. Really? Like, in that period, um, where he got me, like, his agent and manager. Oh, everything. Everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I still have his manager, and, like, he would talk to me about my depression. Like, I would, he would call so you, me oh, about right. so my... So you actually knew it. You were friends yeah. with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. And so... Uh, yeah, it wasn't just some random, like, he passed me in the street, and he's like, don't quit comedy. I'm like, thanks, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Williams. I thought you were going to say he tweeted you or something. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. And, uh, and then he just flies away. <laughs> um, so he, so Robin sees me, and he kind of nicely pushes Cam out of the way. And he goes, Jamie. And I go, oh. And we hug, and he goes, wait here. And I go, okay. So he comes out of the bathroom, and he goes, uh, I go, hey, you have to meet. 
uh, Ali, my ex, because uh, he funded our podcast for like two years oh. when we were getting off the ground and Ali never met him. So he was like, all right, he goes, I have to meet her. And I go, where are you sitting? He goes, I'm right here. And then he goes, where are you sitting? I go, oh, I'm on like the other side of the theater. Like, don't worry. It's going to be a clusterfuck if you come. And he goes, no, I have to meet her. And I go, okay. So I walk him across. And at the time, he has this huge beard because uh, he's like this like god beard because he's doing uh, a Broadway show where he's playing a prisoner of war. And so he looks like very wise and prophetic. And he comes over to our seat. And Allie, like to her credit, we do not talk anymore, but she like pushes every like we were like by all these like rich people who were like giving us shitty looks for like her tattoos and stuff, and she uh-huh. like shoves them out of the way. And they're freaking out around Robin. And like here's yeah. the thing. We've seen young people freak out when they yeah. see like celebrities. I've never seen someone who looked like my dad yeah. just like he, without saying anything, <laughs> just like touching him. Like it yeah. was the most surreal shit ever. So Allie pushes uh, them aside. Runs and gives Robin a hug. Robin, who I said nothing to on the way to the bathroom about comedy, about anything, uh, grabs her by the face and just goes, you can't let him quit. Oh, wow. Like, he sensed it. Really? Like, he had this weird, sad comedian. Uh Maybe he was just saying it in general, but, like, that was the day. That was the hour, two hours before that I was like, I'm officially done. And then he just like told her, he was like, why I wow. shouldn't quit. Mm. Uh, and like, that was it. That artificially kept me going for like a year. And then he died. And then I was like, fuck this. Mm. Like, I quit, which is like the okay. exact opposite of uh, what he wanted or what you're supposed to do. Um, but I have never felt like I love comedy. And I love joking, especially about sad things. But, like, I don't know, man. And I'm sure you're going, like, something about it, there's something about it that either didn't resonate, or, again, maybe this is me, my dad. Like, I just had a horrible conversation with my dad on the way here. But, like, my dad thinks I run away from success. And to me, I would never think that because I'm like, no, I don't want to be struggling. Like, I want to be very successful and whatever. Mm -hmm. But my dad's like, every time you reach this peak, you stop. And so, I don't know where that comes from. Like, I haven't really read up on that. I'm so sorry, Dad. 